Part three of today's discussion is our season predictions. And this is where we are going to get into our prediction for the, the win-loss record. We'll go through the schedule. We're going to do some other fun things like that. And then, of course, the postseason prediction and where we think Notre Dame is going to end up. If you're looking for the full bracket prediction, you know, nationally, that's going to be tomorrow. And so you're going to have to tune in tomorrow to find out who's going to be around Notre Dame. We thought about just doing that one now, and then we would still do our one on Saturday. But it's like, it kind of made no sense to do the national one since we're going to be talking about what we're thinking Notre Dame if we know. So that factored into the conversation as well. Yep. So this is just a Notre Dame centered, Notre Dame specific kind of season prediction part of the show. And again, we'll we'll do the full bracket tomorrow and what we think is going to happen, all the conference champions and all of that, and, and we'll fill out our bracket, and it'll be kind of a bracketology uh, fun show tomorrow. But so for right now, let's talk about Notre Dame. First thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the season schedule, Brian, and what that looks like, and, and the wins, the losses, and whatever your prediction happens to be. So do you want to go through it game by game and decide wins and losses and then get to our season record, or how, how do you want to do well, it? Let's just talk overall about the record because okay. I I have um, I don't know who I don't have a specific team that I have them losing to. Correct, completely agree. Or like if I went one through twelve and said I, I think they're going to be that team, that team, that team, that team, and that team, I'd have them at twelve and zero. Correct. They will be. They should be and will be, in my opinion, favored in every game this season. Well, they they won't be favored against A and M, but they should be. It, that's what I'm saying. They should be. Opinion. Yeah. It's ridiculous that they're not, but that's a that's a betting thing. That's a separate that's not a I think this team is better than this team. This is we need to get bets on both sides so that we don't lose all our shirts. That's what yeah. that is. And so, so like yeah. he, he, here's what factors in schedule wise for me, Vince, because in like this is a this is a tougher schedule than I believe a lot of NRA fans are giving it credit for. But I'm not also gonna sit here and, and argue that this is a gauntlet of a schedule. But here here's what it comes down to for me. Going undefeated is hard. Yes. It's very hard. Agreed. Nick Saban won seven national titles. Only two of them were undefeated, I believe, right? And one of them was the COVID year. And then his first title at Alabama. That's it. So I believe he won six titles at Alabama, correct? He won in 09, one in 11, one in 12, one in 15, and one in 17, and one in 19, or one in 20, right? So that's six. Am I I counting that correctly at Alabama? Six at Bama? And then he won one at LSU. And as I said, he only had one undefeated season. I mean, two undefeated seasons. So his LSU team lost a game that year. His 11 Bama team lost at home to LSU. His 12 Alabama team lost to Texas A&M. His 15 Alabama team lost to Ole Miss. His 17 Bama team lost to Auburn. So, you know, it's very hard to go undefeated. It just is. And, you know, Georgia went undefeated, what, in year their second title, I believe, was an undefeated team? No, no. Their, yeah, their, their second their second title team, I believe, was undefeated, correct? They went 15-0, I believe, in 2022. It sounds right. But their first title team was not. They got smacked in the, in the SEC title game by Alabama, who then they beat in a rematch. And Alabama's 22 title team – you know, as good as it was, it, you know, it wasn't exactly the, because the East has been down, it wasn't like the gauntlet that some people make it out to be. And they didn't, they didn't have to play Alabama that year because LSU beat Alabama played in the SEC title. So you go undefeated in the SEC and you don't have to play Bama. There's a little bit of an asterisk there for me for your undefeated season, but they beat a really good Oregon team that year, beat Ohio state by a point, beat TCU. They, you know, beat an LSU team, beat Tennessee, who was really good that year. So, you know, but his first team was – his better team was 21, who lost a game. You know, Ohio State in 2014 won a national title, went 14-1. and one, Lost at home to a Virginia Tech team by two touchdowns that went 7-6. and six. Clemson's first championship since 1981. I think it was 1981, right? I think Danny Ford won a national title in 1981. But, you, you know, that team had some great wins, that 2016 uh, – Clemson team, Vince, that, that won a national title. If you remember with um, Deshaun Watson and a great defense, that team went out that year 
and beat number three Louisville on Lamar Jackson, went on the road and beat number 12 Florida State, beat Auburn on the road to start the season, beat a ranked Virginia Tech team, beat number three Ohio State in the national title, 30 or in the semifinal 31 to nothing, and beat Bam in the national championship game. Lost at home to Pitt, eight and five Pitt in November. Got beat by Pat Narduzzi at home. 2017 Clemson, who had two losses. One was to Alabama, the national title team, and the other one was at Syracuse, went four and eight. 2019 Georgia, great team, beat Notre Dame, went, what, 12-2 and two that year, finished top 10, lost at home to a 4-8 South Carolina team. Point is, stuff happens. You're going to lose games. I mean, Urban Meyer had some of those games. So you're just you're, – you're playing a schedule that is challenging week after week. It's not a gauntlet. It's not like the 1988 season where you had to play four top 10 teams. It's not that. But there's a lot of teams that can sneak up on you in, in any given week and knock you off. And as I've said before, and I'll stick to it again, I have no undefeated teams in the Power Four level, and I do consider Notre Dame a Power Four level. Like that, that's that's just that's where I'm at. I think everybody loses a game this season, and I think Notre Dame is no different. Now, if you're going to tell me who that's going to be, I can't tell you who that's going to be because I, if I go through each game individually, they should win every game. Like that, you know what I mean? So, like that's the challenge of picking the schedule, Vince. Is 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 that right there? So. That's why it, it was a, it was you know and, and I've and I've had some years where I've picked them to go undefeated because I predicted what they should do, and if I'm going to predict what they should do based on their roster versus everybody else's, then yeah, twelve and zero is is where they should be. I'm I'm trying to be a little bit more okay. I'm trying to predict what I think they will do, which I don't normally do, and it could end up biting me in the butt because knowing my luck, this will be the one year they actually do go undefeated. You know what I mean? And I predict it, but. That's kind of where I'm at, Vince. When you look at their schedule overall, the reason um, that that I have it the way that I have it is because I just don't know who they're going to be. So, right, that's why we're not doing the the schedule by schedule thing this year. Good, I will because say I didn't have an answer for that either, and I have them at eleven and one. I, yeah, I so just, that, let's get into it. That's our that's your prediction. So, just regular yeah. season that that's where we're at. We're both yep. at eleven and that's one. that's what I, I wrote don't know down. We're going to lose two, but I, that's what my record is. I put eleven and one, and then I put a question mark because I it, it's a and I put who do they lose to question mark I don't know the and and, <laughs> and that's just being honest. I mean the 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 college football season is just it's wild, right? I mean even in the NFL, no undefeated team wins the Super Bowl. That hasn't happened since nineteen seventy two with the Dolphins. Right. And, you know, I, it can happen in college. Could Notre Dame do it? Sure. It's a possibility. They mm-hmm. have the talent to do it, but it's just and, such and, an and up and, and down I won't type be of season. shocked if they do it. No. Like, I'll say that. Like, I won't be surprised if they go 12 and 0. And if they lose a game, I'm going to be upset because it's a game that they should have won. Like, that, that's absolutely how I feel right now, you know? But I just, I'm not comfortable with. There's a bunch of new faces, obviously. You know, we got some new coaches. That there, there's just a lot of unknowns right now that I'm not comfortable saying 12 and 0. And I don't want it also to sound like super homerish either. Like, oh, they're gonna win every game, and it's not even gonna be close. Like that, that just sounds crazy to me. So while I do think Notre I think Dame is crazy, the- I, I like I think it's totally fair of somebody like this year more than other years. Picking twelve and zero does not take as much projection as needed. Like I think, I think I picked Notre Dame to go. Like we were talking. Remember recently on a podcast, we were asked what was the season you got most right and the season you got most wrong. Sure. And I talked about how 09 I was really wrong. I thought that team was going to be really good. I think I picked that team to go twelve and zero. And again, it was because I projected what they should do. But in order to get there, I had to make a lot of but, 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 but if, 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 ifs. Right. The only if I have for this team to finish undefeated is if they if they are as good as they're supposed to be. Right. That's it. They're not a lot of butts if they just don't hurt themselves. Because website wise, I believe this team. Did I say? Did I say website? Because <laughs> you just texted me. Sorry, that was an accident. Roster wise, yeah. Roster. I said website because you just texted me something that said website. <laughs> roster wise. I think they have a better roster than everybody that they play. Having said that, it's not enormous. Do I think they have a better roster than Texas A&M? Yes, I do. Right. Do I think it's enormously better? No, I don't. I think they have a better roster than 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 Florida State. Is it by a big margin? No, it isn't. 
Am I going to argue with you for 20 minutes if you say otherwise? No, I'm not. Sure. Same thing with USC. Same thing with Louisville. Yeah. You know, and, and then there's other teams that are good enough to where if you have an off game, which everybody has off days, that's what we're talking about the whole, it's hard to go undefeated. It's hard to show up mentally and technically yeah. and be pr- at your best every single day. 100%. Every single week. I mean, like, like I said, Alab- Nick Saban, greatest coach of our generation. Like this, And I don't think that's arguable. You know, like for a while there was close. You know, I thought him and Urban were kind of neck and neck for a while. You know, Saban won a title first. Then Urban won, you know, two at Florida. Then Saban tied him in 09, passed him with 11 and 12. Then Urban won again in 14. And you're like, okay, it's like it's back and forth. After 2014, it was it, Saban just pulled ahead and Urban never, never got the most out. And then he was out. But if you look at how great Nick Saban was and all the great teams that he had in his career, again, he had two seasons where his team went undefeated. That's it. That's it. I mean, from 2001 to 2023, with the five and six seasons out because he's in the NFL, Nick Saban won a minimum of 10 games in all but three seasons. 2002 at LSU, 2004 at LSU, where they went nine and nine and three, probably would have gone ten and three if he didn't leave before the bowl game. And then the first year at Bama, they went seven and six. Since then, they won 12, 14, 10, 12, 13, 11, 12, 14, 14, 13, 14, 11, 13, 13, 11, and 12 games. He had two undefeated seasons in that time. That's it. He had more two loss seasons at Bama than he had one loss, than zero loss seasons at Alabama. So but do I think this team can go undefeated? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do too. Because they don't play the SEC West like Saban did all those years. That's also part of it. But that that's kind of where I'm at, Vince. And it is it's just it's hard to it is hard to go undefeated, but I do think this team is capable of it. I'm just not going to predict it, but I won't be shocked if it happens. I, I will say that. And, and one other thing too, Pete Carroll, as great and dominant as he was at USC, had one undefeated season. That's it. Yeah. One. The first t- year they won a title, they lost a game. Right? And then that great 05 team obviously lost to Texas. That was a little different because at least that was in the postseason. But when I point out Saban's title teams, the reason that those have more impact is because you, if you won the title, you didn't lose in the postseason. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. So that's kind of how I looked at it. Um, but Notre Dame has had three undefeated – regular seasons in the last 15 years. So it's certainly possible. Right. It's just, if I'm predicting it, I can't go there. I'm 11 and one, but I also could not tell you who they're going to lose to. I, I do think there's, there's the, if, if you're say, who are the teams are most likely to lose to just in order of the schedule, I would say Texas A&M, Louisville, Georgia tech, Florida state, and USC. Those are the five. I think that have the best shot in order of, of knocking Notre Dame off. Interesting. I will be shocked if it's a Purdue, oh, if it's yeah. a Virginia, if it's a Stanford. That'll shock me. Sure, but if they have this big emotional win over uh, over you know a, a a good Florida State and maybe at USC's got three four losses and they they're they're you know th- that's their Super Bowl and you know they're not playing for you know there's a lot of those things that could factor into it, and uh, that's why I have them where I have them. Postseason. Here's where the rubber meets the road, right? And what Notre Dame does in the postseason is going to, frankly, decide whether this season was a success or not. And it's also going to decide, in my opinion, whether they whether this program has taken a step or not. And, and there's two different kinds of steps that they can take, in my opinion. There's the Marcus Freeman step, as in, you know, okay, they did better than last year. The, the arrow is still pointing up. It's kind of like what we talked about in part one, right? It's the, the the bare minimum to keep the arrow pointing in a positive direction. Still the guy, you know, that kind of stuff. To, you know, it's taking a step as a program and winning more than they've won in the postseason since 1993, right? And we, we all know that they haven't won a New Year's Six game since 1993, so they got that monkey hanging over their, uh, you know, you know, on their back. But again, there are no more New Year's Six games, and so, you know, what, well, there are, but they're po- they're playoff, but they're games. part of the postseason, right? right? And so right. that not only, so so the New Year's Six games are still important, right? And it's still a step. Mean a whole lot more now. 
that's my exact right. point. So it right. the pressure has ratcheted up in those bowl games yeah. than they would have in the past. Like I, I will feel a heck of a lot different going to the Fiesta Bowl next year than I did when they were playing in the Fiesta Bowl a couple of years ago. Correct. You know what I mean? From a pressure standpoint, from a, like, this is a big game standpoint. Like, New Year's Six games almost felt like an afterthought. Which is, which is sad. It's and hugely sad. An excitement sad. Of, of, of media and college right. football leadership at large, but it's also the reality. Right. I can exactly. think it's bull crap, and I can think it's unnecessary and completely avoidable, but still say, but it's also the truth. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. and and I don't like it, but right. that that is the because it, it, we're talking perception here, hundred percent. Yes, and and that's absolutely correct, Vince. So so the question is then, what is your prediction for the postseason when it comes to the uh, what the results are? And I'm I'm going to do this, Vince, and and, and people are going to get mad. I think, <laughs> but I'm going to love it. Okay, I'm going to leave I'm going to leave leave a little bit of a teaser for the postseason success in today's prediction show because okay. I want to save it for tomorrow's oh, overall college football show. But I will okay. say this: part of my prediction is a is a is eleven and one minimum regular season. Okay, and I do believe they win at least one game in the playoff. Okay, because eleven and one Notre Dame's a lock to make the playoff, and I think yes. they're pretty much a lock to. to to get a first round to host home yeah. home game, yeah, yeah, yeah. like Agreed. I don't see any scenario where they're eleven and one, they're a nine seed or lower. I agree, completely agree with happening. that statement. Yes, so I'm I'm going eleven and one, and and they get a win at home in the playoff. Okay, beyond that, I want to save that for tomorrow's show because we're going to predict the entire play. We're going to have our brackets and everything. It's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. So, but I am predicting eleven and one okay. plus one win. So I will do the same thing just to keep people on their toes. And I'm not saying I'm predicting more than one win, but I am saying I will predict at least one win. Okay. I will predict one win because I also agree with you. If they're 11 and one, they're hosting. I like Notre Dame's chances hosting anybody. I don't care who it is. They're not a top four. They're hosting somebody. So that means they're nine through 12. I feel very good about Notre Dame's chances if they're hosting in the postseason. And so I will also predict a win, but I will save the rest of it for tomorrow. But 11 and 1 absolutely gets them a hosting yeah. gig. There's no and, doubt about it. And they it. will win that first round. And they will win that first round. Absolutely. I don't care who it is. They right. will win that first round. I don't round. care either. So let me ask you this, Vince. What is the thing that you are most confident? about when you look at this football team that leads you to believe confidently like like my prediction of an 11 a minimum 11 and 1 plus 1 I'm actually pretty confident in that prediction if if they're worse oh, sure. than honestly it's it will be a disappointment that's why I said like we talked earlier 10 and 2 in a in a postseason win that's progress I'm but still going to be disappointed absolutely especially if it's not a non playoff win cuz I correct I think 10 and 2 might still get them in if one of their two losses is to some team that you don't expect them to lose to because then they're still going to have a lot of really good wins but 10 and 2 does make it a little bit questionable well, for example yeah. if they're 10 and 2 and Georgia's 9 and 3 and they're the final two teams in consideration for the the last at large Georgia at 9 and 3 will have more losses but they will also have likely more, more really good wins. wins because of their schedule. There's a chance that that could be right. true. See, at Georgia at 10 yeah. and 2, no brainer they have more quality wins. Well, like based on what we think of sure. teams. So 10 and 2 could certainly still get them in, but it's just going to be harder. And it's not a given that they're going to be at home. Correct. At, at 10 and 2. Oh, now, I don't think they are. Because I do think there's going to be a lot of chaos this year in college football. Sure. Because of the schedules and, that, and things like that. But it's just going to be a lot harder. Here's, here's my blanket statement on 10 and 2. At eleven and one, you're in. You're it's no problem. You're hosting. At ten and two, you need help, and it it really depends on what the rest of college football looks like. Ten and two is not a lot to make the playoff. It's just not. You're going to get a lot of Notre Dame detractors because again, the thought process is that the schedule is easy, and that 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 will hurt them, right? But. I, I also, Although by the end of the year, we'll know whether that was or wasn't. Agreed. So, oh, completely right. agree with that. I, I just I think that there may be a case where ten and two is a lock for getting in the playoff, depending on what happens Correct. around. Them. There's a bunch of three loss SEC and Big Ten teams. It's more likely in the SEC than it is the Big Ten. Sure. The SEC gave a lot of its top teams challenging schedules. 
Right. And a lot of the SEC teams are playing really good out of conference games. I mean, Texas is going to Michigan. Sure. Georgia's going to Clemson. I mean, LSU's playing USC. USC. There's, yeah. Where you're just not seeing as much of that in the Big right. Ten. So that's why I think 10 and 2, there's a discussion. Like, you know, you've got to give me way more data points right. for me to know if Notre Dame's getting in the playoff. Who they beat, who they lose to. Absolutely. How good are those teams? Oh, exactly. 11 and 1, they're in. And I also think they're a lock to host. At that 100%. point, I really do. Now, are they a lock to be the five seed? That's a different conversation. Sure, five through eight is is up in the air, but ten and two, I think you've given up some of your, you know, control. Yeah, I'll say that. I think you give yeah. up some of your control at that point. You're so, gonna need somebody to maybe lose in the yeah. conference title game to get yeah. a third or fourth loss. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I don't like that position for Notre Dame. That they, they need help at that yeah. point. So. uh yeah. So what am I most, most confident likely. in? What am I most confident in? To be perfectly honest with you, Brian. Oh, I could go either direction with this. And it's kind of a, a bigger statement, I guess. I am. I hate to say this because it's discounting the other side of the football, but I'm most confident in Notre Dame's offense right now. Mm-hmm. I really am. Interesting. When you when you add in what I think about Riley Leonard. When you add in what I think about this backfield, when you add in what I think about this wide receiver room and how deep it is, when you add in what I think about the tight ends, yes, there's question marks up front right now, but I think those question marks will get answered by the time the end of the season rolls around. Like I don't, I think there's still talent on the offensive line, and I don't think it's going to hold them back. Okay, and then the the cherry on top, and probably the most important piece is the fact that Mike Denbrock is the offensive coordinator. Yeah, I feel very very confident in this offense, I could make the same argument for the defense because of Al Golden and because of the experience and because of the depth at at defensive line, all of those things. I just love the possibilities of this offense, where they are, what they can do, what I think they're going to do, the fact that they can absorb some injuries if necessary at some of the positions. I think that helps them as well. I just, I am very confident what this offense is going to be able to do. And you and I have talked about this ad nauseum for years. You can have a defense that can get you to the playoffs. Notre Dame has had that in the past. I think they've got that again. I really do. This is an elite defense, okay? But you need an offense that can score points if you want to win a championship and if you want to win playoff games. Notre Dame has not had that in the past. They have that now, in my opinion. That's why I'm confident in what this offense means to this team and their potential success in December and January. I got to go with the defense is the thing I'm most confident in just because it's been so good really in recent seasons. It's been the thing that's fueled this team in 2012. It fueled the team in 2017, uh, you know, until their late collapse, it fueled this team in 2020. It fueled this team last year. I, 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 I've got to go with the defense. I think that's the thing I, I can say right now. I'm most confident in my in my prediction. Now, I'll tell you this right now, Vince. If you're correct and the offense plays championship football, if I had more confidence that I knew the offense was going to be good. Now, I think it's going to be very good, but that's why I'm 11-1 and because I think sure. the offense is going to be very good. If you were to say, hey, Brian, I fast-forwarded to the end of the season. I found a a time machine, right? The TMV left one of their things, you know, I can travel through time or whatever. Uh, It was a TVA, excuse me, TVA. Uh, Then I, here's what I told you. Riley Leonard's healthy all year. The O-line ends up being pretty good. And this offense is consistently one of the best in the country. If you told me, and that's the only thing you told me, I'd say, well, then they're going to go 12 and 0. They're not going to lose anybody. If their offense is that, they're not losing anybody. Because their defense has literally given them a chance to win every single game uh, of of the Marcus Freeman tenure outside of one, and that would be USC two years ago. That's it. And even then, it was like okay, but you still had chances in that game to to you know to go out there and tie it up or, or take a lead and gain some momentum, and you fumbled it away or threw a pick or whatever. If you told me that, I'd say they're not losing the game. Sure, like they're they're not going to lose a game. I'm still in, I need to see, I I think they're going to be better on offense, but I still need to see it. And I especially need to see it in the big games. I need to see if the offense shows up against A&M. I need to see if the offense shows up against Louisville this year, who's still going to be very good on defense. I need to see if they're going to show up against Florida State. And I need to see if they're going to show up at USC. 
I know the offense can do what they need to do when they play USC at home and the defense spots them 21 points. Hey, play with no pressure. How are they going to go out there next year when the defense can't set you up for three touchdowns in that game? Right. Cause we saw what happened against Clemson last year. That last year's Clemson team wasn't even as good as the year before's Clemson team, but the defensive special teams didn't spot them three touchdowns and look what happened. They got beat. And, and so they, they, they weren't good enough on offense to, to overcome the occasional game where the defense wasn't elite. And so I, I'm so confident in that group If you, if you are correct about the offense and it, and then this team is, is will not lose a game in the regular season. Because as I said, their schedule is more challenging than a lot of Notre Dame fans give it credit for. Sure. But it's not the gauntlet of 88, 89, 97, 2017, you know, that type of thing. It's not that, uh, you know, like th- we need to be able to have a real conversation about the schedule. And I think a lot of Nerdy fans are off base about saying it's not good. It's this, it's that. I don't agree with that. But if you're to sit there and be like, oh, no, and talk yourself into, you know, Miami, Ohio winning 11 games last year is the same as winning 11 games in the Big Ten. Not, OK, you, you, you lost me. Right. It's still the Mac. Now, they're a very good Mac team, but it's still a Mac team. You know what I mean? Uh, no, I'm not going there either. It's it. The truth it, to me is in the middle of the perception about the schedule. It's the Homer take that, you know, they convince themselves that everyone's good. And then there's the not that the opposite sort of the pessimist take or the, 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 the people who think they're realistic, but they're a little overly negative, I think. And then there's some that kind of are being honest. They're just evaluations are a little bit off in one way or the other. So there's all types of reasons. I think the truth is kind of in the middle. It's a challenging schedule. It's not, a brutal how do you manage this season sure my my 11 and one comes down to because i still don't know that this offense can answer the bell for 12 games that that's that's really where my 11 and one it. comes from i get if it if i knew that the offense is going to to some degree answer the bell every week this team won't lose a game because like let's be honest mike denbrock's offense answered the bell every week last year yep they played well enough to win every week last Defense year even, even florida state like the offense played well enough to win that game early your defense just kept giving up scores. And, you know, I just – if you if I knew that to be true, man, there's there's nobody beats them in the regular season. Nobody beats them in the regular And our conversation tomorrow would be really fun. Like that's still – and that leads into the kind of the, the final piece of this is what's the biggest stumbling block? It's that right there. It's the offense, and primarily the offensive line. Can the offensive line yep. be good enough against Texas A&M and Louisville – and Florida State and USC for this team to have the balance it needs to be to beat the best teams on the schedule. That that's where I'm at, and and so that's that's the stumbling block for me. But yeah. if I'm wrong, or not not if I'm wrong because I'm not predicting it's going to be bad, right? It's, but it's the biggest but, question but mark. If, right if they now. answer that yeah, question right. effectively, then this exactly. team doesn't lose a game. Yeah. But that's still the thing that's going to be the stumbling block. Where I could see the defense playing great against a And M, and you lose 17 to 14, 17 to 13, something like that, and one of those scores is set up by a turnover on offense. That's still my big fear. Same thing at Florida State. That's still my big fear because you know th- th- that's the side that's got to show me that it can be that. Gotcha. What's your What's your the biggest concern? The thing that could keep them from being as good as you think that that we're predicting that they're going to be. Offensive line is is absolutely one one. I, but but a different one I wanted to kind of bring up, and it's a stumbling block because we don't know. And maybe this is going to sound terrible, and I don't mean it to sound that way, but it's still something that we don't know. If Notre Dame is going to make a run in the playoff, Marcus Freeman is going to be in a position that he has never been in before as a head coach. And how is he going to handle that? What is that going to look like from a head coaching perspective? I don't know the answer to that. I think he'll probably be fine. But to me, that's a bit of a stumbling block for me right now. It's, it's, it's from the head coaching position. I I have, I have faith that it will be fine, but it's still a stumbling block. Marcus Freeman has never coached in the playoffs. He has never coached in those kind of big games before. This will be a new Avenue for him. If you want to be unfair, but also true, the biggest game he coached in the postseason was the Fiesta bowl and they blew a 28. And it didn't end well. I mean, now I think that's very unfair to say. I, I think he was doing some other things, and I don't. And think he the just outcome was right, but right, but that's the only that's game fair. like that we've seen. That's fair, right? That's fair. I, if someone was brought that up to me, I'd push back on it hard. 
But I'm just saying, to your point, I'm backing up your point that we haven't yeah. seen him in that moment right? since he got to Notre Dame. I think, like I said, I have faith that he'll be fine, but it is still a question because he's never had to do it before. He's never had to guide this team through a playoff run. He has never been in the playoffs, period, right? And so we have seen him get this team up for big games and things like that, but this is going to be big game after big game after big game after big game. And so can he keep an animal? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can he keep them where they need to be to make a playoff well, run? To your point, you know, LSU in 20 or Alabama in 2011, that that's a team that to me was able to kind of, they, they, I, Nick Saban doesn't win seven titles in a, in a 12 team playoff. Now he still wins maybe four. Sure. Like his 11 so much harder title to me. So because much harder. that team gets beat by Stanford or Oklahoma state, in my opinion that year, but they went 11 and one right. did not play in the sec title game. Cause they lost to LSU and they got a rematch against LSU in a neutral field. Right. LSU beat you at home where now that team might get exposed in the postseason because you now got to win four games. Cause that exactly. Bama team would have had to win four games to win a title. And I don't think they would have, that was not a great Bama team. Right. Now you could argue that maybe there was another Bama team in other years that maybe in a, in a 12 team could have won. I don't know that I would take that case to be honest with you. Sure. And, and so it, it, I, I look at it, it is it, it is a lot more challenging than now in the the fourteen playoff era. Absolutely. Your, your and point. now look in in his defense, nobody has taken a team through this entire right. playoff run. You know, the most you've ever had to do is right. two or three if you count like the conference championship game, which you could make a case that that's fair. part of the playoff. It, it is okay because if so, Ohio State doesn't beat was it Michigan State in twenty fourteen. They don't, or no, they beat Wisconsin in 2014. If they don't beat Wisconsin in 2014, they're not even in the playoff. Right. So, so like in the 14 playoff, because I mean, it was winner go home. Correct. For them. And, and so, you know, it, it, it's not always the case. Georgia lost their title game in 2021 and then still won the national title. So there's always exceptions to the rule. Of but course. by and large, you lose your title game. You didn't get probably out play for championship. Right. Now you do get that opportunity. Right. And right. so, the, the problem with Saban is Saban won two titles in years where his team didn't even play for the SEC title yeah, this is true. and still got into the playoff. Like right. that, that's, that's, you know, that's the the difference, right. but, uh, it, but only had to play two games. And, and one of them was against, a uh, you know, both years, they beat another SEC team in the title game. Right. I right. still would have liked to have seen that 2011 Alabama team against 2011 Stanford with Andrew Luck. And I would have loved to have seen that 2011 Bama team try to defend that Brandon Whedon Oklahoma state team that beat Stanford in the Fiesta Bowl. Because remember, the only game Oklahoma State lost that year was this. they played a Thursday night game after there was that big plane crash that killed a bunch of members of the athletic department. Do you remember that? And they still made them play that game? That's the only game at, at Iowa State. It's the only game Oklahoma State lost all year. And and so, you know, but but you you can't hide. You can't avoid those type of games now that you're in a 12-team a in, in right. playoff. But that is one of the advantages of, of a 12-team playoff. Is that? And by the way, the leading into that game, they beat Texas Tech sixty-six to six. The week after that that devastating loss, their next game was against Oklahoma. They beat them forty-four to ten. That was number ten Oklahoma. They beat them forty-four to ten. You know, like they beat number twenty-two Texas thirty-eight to twenty-six on the road. They beat number eight A and M thirty to twenty-nine on the road that year in twenty eleven. So that team was very good. Very good. Uh, Bama never had to play them. They didn't have to play Andrew Luck in Stanford. They're, so that was all, that was always kind of that thing, Vince. That yeah, that you look at and say, man, that's tough. But like 20, 2012, What if that Georgia team that lost to Bama at the very end of that game, they get into the postseason, they're they're still alive. So there is the opportunity for it. But in a four team playoff, unless your name was Bama, you lose in your conference title game, you're out. Mm-hmm. Ohio State wouldn't have got the same benefit of the doubt that Alabama got. Right. Right. Or Georgia got in 2021. So, yeah, it, it's it's a fair – it's a very – I didn't even think about that, Vince. Like, I'm sitting there thinking of all these potential stumbling blocks, and I'm thinking about parts of the team. I never even thought about the head coach. That's a really good point. Because he's got to prove it now. As, as Karen said in the chat, too, like there's a first time for everything, and that's Absolutely. 100%. Oh, 100%. You know, I mean, and, and Nick's, when Nick Saban won his title in 2004 at, at LSU, he had never had a team that was a title contender prior to that. Right. I mean, his his best team, you could argue, prior to that was two years before when he was at LSU 
that team finished the season in the top 10. They finished the season ranked seventh. That's a team that lost three games in the regular season. They lost to Tennessee right. by eight. They lost at home to Alabama to Florida by 29 and less, lost at home to Ole Miss by 11. You know, and so like, oh, I get that, it. That was the best team you Look, ever had. It, you, you, and, you never, the year before his first title, remember, they got their brains beat in by Utah in the Sugar Bowl by, by uh, Gus, by Brian Johnson was their quarterback. Remember that? It was Kyle Whittingham's uh, tenure at, at Utah, and and uh, Andy Ludwig was their offensive coordinator on that team. And, I mean, they smacked Bama that year. Next year, Bama goes out and runs the table. So until you do it, of course, exactly, and that's you the don't thing. know it. And, and that's the thing. We're not saying he doesn't have the ability, but he's. I think he would tell you, Coach Freeman would tell you, yeah, I got to prove it. I, I think we're doing some good things, but now we got to go out and show that what we're exactly. trying to do is correct. It's an unknown. It's right. an unknown, and that's why it's a. It's we, a good we did have a super yeah. chat, Vince, that I wanted to get to. In this, this speaks to what we were just talking about. This is a super chat from PK. What to do? Would love to hear on top of your general predictions some predictions with certain conditions. For example, record prediction. If I tell you that the O line is the Joe Mord winner finalist, now I, I don't know what other ones you'd like to hear about. I'm going to go with the one that you gave us because it's yes. very relevant to the conversation we just had. Agreed. So to his point, if you were to tell me, again, you get that time machine, or it's not a time machine, you can just, you know, the T what it allows you to dump to different universes or whatever. But you know, let's say you use the time machine that uh, that they built in um in Avengers, right? Avenger ends game, Avengers Endgame. Okay, so I can go back in time and I can go forward in time as well. And you're to tell me, hey Brian, I went ahead and I fast forwarded to the end of the year and I was only there for 10 seconds. The only thing I learned while I was there is that no Notre Dame won the Joe Moore Award this year. 12 and 0. 12 and 0, and they're at least in the semifinals at the yeah. very least. Yep. But if now this, you're, you're team, looking if at this team has a Joe Moore award winning offensive line, I think this team can play with and beat anyone. Correct. Yep. Like there's not, a, like if, if you could tell me I can take the 15 0 line, the 17 0 line, or the 20 0 line and put them on this team, I don't think anyone beats Notre Dame. Yep in the regular season. And I, I think the number of teams that might be able to beat them in the postseason, you can count on one hand because they'd have an elite defense, an elite quarterback, very talented skill players everywhere. And what's the thing that you're concerned about right now? O-line. If you were to tell me that this O-line wins a Joe Moore award at the end of the year, it's because Notre Dame's undefeated. And, and honestly, didn't play in a whole lot of close games, to be honest with you. Like if Notre Dame's O line plays like Joe Moore Award winners against Texas A&M, that game won't be close. Right. The only thing AM really has over Notre Dame is that they can neutralize that offense with their defensive line. You take that away, and all of a sudden, there's not a lot of good matchups that favor Texas A&M. You know that same thing against Florida State. If the O line plays like Joe Moore winners against Louisville, that game's not close, Vince. Right. If they play like Joe Moore Award winners against Florida State, that game will be closer. But it won't be overly competitive, in my opinion. I just, I don't, that's a big jump. I don't see that happening. But if I knew that to be true, I don't think anybody beats this football team. Agreed. And and somebody else said, if Riley, Andrew Gilmore said this, if Riley Leonard is a Heisman candidate, we are legit title contenders. Agree. Because I don't think Riley Leonard can be a legit Heisman contender if the O line doesn't play well. Correct. It all circles back to that yep. for me. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And so I think all those things are are absolutely true. But if Notre Dame, if Notre Dame's team wins the Joe Moore Award or is a Joe Moore Award finalist, I don't know that anybody beats this football team. Agreed. I just don't think it's going to happen, unless something else just goes like, "What the heck?" Like yeah. I don't, I don't know, like how that happened. So yeah, I, I that's where I would go. That's Love a really it. good point. We had a couple other super chats, Vince. I oh, wanted to get to it. Anthony Solomon. Thanks for the show today, Anthony. Thank you for the super chat. I very very much uh, avoided it. Uh, K Grant says I'll have to watch later. Watch this later, but wanted to drop in. Go Irish. Can't wait to watch this. I hope you enjoy it, K Grant. I did want to say this. This is this is really at the sums up our rankings. There was a comment from Christopher Lafaro. Lafaro. Confident about the season, yet nervous about AM. Make it make sense, boys. And I'll tell you exactly this is where we just were talking about, Christopher. It's the un there's still those unknowns. Sure. We love the talent of this team. I don't know anyone that doesn't think this team has a lot of talent, but there's just a lot of unknowns, whether it's not, you know, what Marcus can Marcus Freeman really go on the road and win a top 20 game? Okay, well, we we got to see that against a team that's gonna have better talent than Duke had, let's be honest. Top to bottom, AM's going to have more talent. Top to bottom to Duke. If not, Mike Elko's probably still at Duke. <laughs> you know what I mean? If we're being honest. 
Um, it's the unknowns. They're and, and it's the opener. If if this game was played in week five, and and we're now three weeks away from the A and M game, we've seen them play a couple games, and we're probably feeling a certain way. And you're you know whatever. So that's what it comes down to, Christopher. It's easy. It's it's still the unknowns. This is that time of the year where you get really excited, but there's still those things in the back of your mind and deep in your soul that you're just like, yeah, I can't wait to see this team, but I'm really nervous about this. Oh, or or, absolutely. You know, and for good other- reason, right? I mean, we haven't seen this group of Notre Dame football players play together. I mean, there's there's reason to be nervous. You can you can have the best game plan possible. You can have everything. And 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 look, we're not at every practice. So we don't get to see a lot of these guys interacting with each other from a football standpoint. You know, we get to see them go through some drills and some different things, and we can extrapolate from that, and we can we can hope and we can use our knowledge as coaches and we can do all of those things. But at the end of the day, we're all nervous about it because it's a big game on the road to open things up. It's the first time these guys have all played together. It's the first time that the, all of these coaches have coached together. It's a lot of firsts, right? And there's reasons to be nervous. Now, I'm also confident. And so that kind of displaces some of the nervousness. But if you just go in thinking you're just going to whoop A, you know, just open up a can on these guys and it's not going to be any kind of drama then I, I it's a homer take that could be proven true. It could, right? Like it definitely it could happen, could. but it's yeah. a homer take now, right? You know, you know what Not I mean. One I'm willing to make at the right, moment. right, but, yeah, exactly. And that's kind of where I'm at. That's yes. that's that's where I'm at. That's so I mean, we'll, we'll we'll see, we'll see kind of where they're at there. We also had a super sticker from Nathan Andy Milton fan. Appreciate that very much, man. Appreciate you very much. But that's what it comes down to, Vince. I this is the, this is probably the most confident I've been in a team going into a season. It's fair. But I still to I still deep down just have that I just got to see it. Absolutely. You know, it's it's and it's not even BK PTSD. It's post Lou PTSD. <laughs> right? Cuz we've been there for 30 years. There's been well, teams that we thought, man, like yeah. man, this 09 offense. You got Jimmy Clausen and Armando Allen and Robert Hughes and Michael Floyd and Golden Tate and Kyle Rudolph and Zach Martin and all, and, and the team just went out there and just laid an egg in big moments. This is this is probably I'll say this my the biggest level of optimism I has have now is this is the first year that I've gone into a season where I really felt per, could predict that both sides of the ball are going to be really good. To your point earlier, whereas in fifteen it was like man I love this offense but I'm nervous about the defense. Sure. In seventeen it's like you know same thing I love this O line but how's Wimbush going to be? Is the defense going to get much better? You know, 2018, you felt felt really good about certain parts of it, but you're not. Are they going to be okay here? Are they going to be okay there? There were question marks in the secondary going into 2018. Fortunately, some of those questions got answered. Delohi Gilman stepped up and played great. Right. You know, but but you know, who's going to step up at receiver in 2018? You weren't very good throwing the ball in 17, and you lost your best receiver. Now, and, and Equinemy St. Brown, Miles Boykin steps up. Like like going into 2018, like we look back now and think about how good Miles and Chase were, but who who really thought Miles Boykin was going to be that? He had like 18 career catches going into 2028, 2018. And and so then there's other years where it's just like you thought that one side was going to be good, the other side you're not sure about. I am most confident in, in both sides of the ball this season. It's just when you talk about competing for a title, I still need to see the offense do it. I think they're capable right. of it. It's the most confident I've been in a long time. I just need to see it. Yep. And that's going to be uh, – that's going to be the big question mark. So that's where we're at. All right, Brian, that's going to do it for our Notre Dame specific prediction. R- remember show. when I said that it wasn't going to be as long of a yeah, show? I know, and I didn't. You were, and you just laughed at me. I was like, dang it. You're I right. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I said famous last words. Yeah. But, but, uh, but anyway, thanks for joining us for our Notre Dame prediction show. Make sure you hop on with us tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is going to be the, the bigger picture prediction show. We're going to predict the entire college football playoff bracket. We are going to predict the conference champions, which may be different than what our conference outlooks were when we because we've been doing them for like a month. And so maybe things have changed. I don't know. A little bit for me. To find out. A little bit for me has. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. So you're gonna have to tune in tomorrow. You're gonna have to hit that notification bell. Uh, so it'll remind you to tune in for tomorrow. And uh, we're gonna have some fun with it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And we may even throw a mailbag in at the end. We'll we'll yes. see how we're feeling uh, by the time that show gets over. If it's a short show, then of course we'll throw in the mailbag. But you know, we never. It, know. it, it will be shorter. <laughs> so I'm confident we'll have a mailbag. Because I, I asked it. Vince, I said, "What would you like to do as part of your last show?" And he's like, "You know me, I always love a good mailbag." So I was like, "Okay, we're gonna do a mailbag." So we're gonna have some fun with that tomorrow. So make sure you tune in. Of course, 
In the meantime, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your family and friends, and of course, jump on the boards. Boards.ourbreakdown.com. If you are a premium member, then you get all the info and you get it quick. And uh, that's where you want to be. So make sure you hit it. Boards.ourbreakdown.com. In the meantime, that's Brian. I'm Vince. Thanks for hanging out with us. And we'll talk to you next time. That would be tomorrow on the Irish Breakdown Podcast.